Hi, I'm David from Electric Teaching, and this is part seven of my make your, uh, making a graphing utility with Python and Pygame. When we last left, I was talking about Python crashing often, and I don't think I've solved that problem completely, but I did, find, I did play around, and I think I've got something where I minimize the errors, especially when we make it into an executable. So before I show you how to uh, make the function, make the program work a little bit better, let me show you an actual executable that I've made. So with a nifty little program called, I'll show it to you, Pygame2exe, and it has it's a library that you have to download too. I got both these items off of pygame.org. I was able to um, make uh, th my graphing utility into its own standalone application or executable. And so I'm going to make a video on showing you how to do that another time. Sorry if I'm teasing you there, but let me just show you what you can do. Um, this will turn it into an application after you run the that Python program. And here is a one that I call my official graphing uh, uh, um, excuse me, utility for my website. So you'll have you'll see some extra information and kind of see where we're going with uh, this as well. The equation is going to be like slightly off the screen. Let me just throw in y equal x, and then let me quit the program, and you'll see it runs cleanly. I had no errors on the screen, and so this application actually ran my graph and had no errors, and that was because I've added this system exit command. So when we last left, I said add the library system. But what we also need to do is go to the my main function, my main function, or excuse me, my main, yeah, my main uh, function. And right at the bottom of it, we need to put in this command. I'm actually got part of it here. S-Y-S dot exit and then parentheses open close because it is a function. And what we're doing is we're using the system library and we're closing the program down completely when it comes back from closing it in graph equation or just closing it here. So Pygame quit does close the window, but it doesn't necessarily close the program or the, uh, to my understanding, the underlying part of what's going on, which is some sort of shell basically. So putting the system exit will hopefully minimize the problems we're having. Okay, today we're going to do on part seven, we want to add in some uh, ability to regraph um, from that one screen and to add some resizing if we get lucky all the way to resizing the screen. So let's get started. Let's come down to uh, where we're in the graph equation. So a little bit lower than this. And I immediately want to put in some information, like a title, which we don't have, and then the ability to start the, a new graph, which will help with testing purposes as well. So I'm going to scroll back up, and I'm going to grab where I have already done the blitting of my title. So I'm going to copy this. Might as well copy, actually, the comment as well. So I'm going to copy that, and I'm going to come down to my graph equation, so before, right after it graphs the equation, before we get in its active loop, so right about here, we're going to paste in the same title information. Make sure it's correctly tabbed. Yes, it is. All right, let's go grab the re um, starting a new equation line. So right here, um, I'm going to borrow this one, but I'm not going to say uh, select when done, and I'm going to put it at a different location. So I'm not going to say select enter, I'll move that part. So I'm copying the instruction mainly. That what I need here is the instruction to start a new graph, which is hitting the Q key. So let's may delete the extra nonsense here. Okay, select Q to start over. That's a perfect thing to say. And actually, what I do, what I where I really prefer this is obviously closer to the top here. So closer to the top here. So let's put in um, Q start over right after the title. Oh, we had the other one about 70 pixels off the top. So I think we can go from there and, and hopefully that'll be the right size for everybody. Everybody might have a different width and height to personalize there. So I have to keep that in mind when I make these instructions blended on the screen. 
So that should do that. I'm going to add in another instruction blit. So actually, let's just paste this one in. And what I'm going to do is change this. I'm going to add in a nifty little thing called um, uh, blitting the y-intercept information. Blitting the y-intercept information. I think the y-intercept is an important part of mathematics. It is the initial point, often the starting point in a lot of word problems. So the y intercept we're going to blit the information and then we're going to create the variable for it here the y intercept is at and what i'm going to do is put um parentheses zero x whoops, zero x comma and now be outside the quote but before the comma separated part plus i'm going to put a string string command to take a variable and turn it into a text object to be displayed, you need to make it into a string, which is str. And what we're going to do is do yint, and I'm going to make this yint in a minute here. And then to make it look right, we're going to have to close off the parentheses xy notation. So I'm going to add another item here, and it's in quotes. I'm going to add, let's see, just the close parentheses, all I need. All right, oops, that's zero, not close parenthesis. All right, that should look good. Uh, the black, the font, I think all that should be fine. I could change this color later, but we'll leave it black for now. And let's see, where do we want it? We could have this one sitting at 100. That should seem about right, so we'll leave that there. So before we do this, we have to make some room, and let's put in a new comment here. We have to calculate, calculate. So we need to calculate the y-intercept. To do this, let's put a little comment, let's we'll say compute and display uh, y-intercept. I probably should put a dash in there. I think that's more appropriate for y-intercept. Most textbooks would have that, so let's go ahead and put that in down below here and make it look a little classy, just in case you want to make this into an app and make some money off of it. Um, let's see, we're going to do x equal zero x equals zero obviously that is the x coordinate for the y-intercept and this is important for domain errors i can't have it crashing on say one over x trying to get the y-intercept of there so this is where we use again the try command nifty python trick try y int is going to be equal to we're going to evaluate the equation the equation which we have passed into here and we're using up here. And this equation is that whatever equation we've typed in and the x value that it's going to be plugging and chugging is x equals zero. So that should work perfectly. We need to round this off. This could be a very interesting, long, irrational number depending on square roots, etc. So what we need to do is we need to use a nice round command. Round parentheses, um, y int, comma, two decimals will be sufficient. Personalize it the way you want. Always want to put it in accept, whether it's important or not for the programming to me is not why I'm doing it. It is, I believe these come like if statements, if this, we always want to have some sort of closure to it in the case of tabbing over or untabbing over. So this closure to me is try with accept, and we'll do nothing. Oh, wait a minute. Actually, we want to do something on this one. In fact, let's put it all on one line. Okay, this can go on one line. We actually want to say the y-intercept doesn't exist. So for displaying purposes, again, so it doesn't crash when it hits the line down here and we haven't assigned anything, we need to display maybe DNE, one of my favorites, for does not exist. All right, so it will evaluate it. It will put uh, does not exist if it has trouble evaluating it. And it will display one or the other when it comes to this point. We also would like to display the, the, the command to plot it. I think it would be neat to have a little command to plot it per request for whatever reason. And this will give you an idea of what I'm going to do down the road, too, when it comes to plotting any x values. I think that's going to be another neat way to personalize our our um, uh, graphing utility is to plot things. So what we're going to do is we're going to say if the y int does not equal, does not equal is the inequalities facing each other, okay? So uh, that is a less than into a, a greater than. We read those left to right in mathematics. So if we do have this D and E <clears throat> does not exist, 
we want to put in um, an instruction to, in fact, I'll just copy the instruction up above here and paste it in <clears throat> for time purposes. Excuse me. My family's been a little bit ill and my throat's starting to feel it. Okay, instruct. We want to say select the Y key to uh, plot it. So I'll just say exactly that. Select um, Y to plot the intercept. <clears throat> intercept there. And then close quote. Make sure that turns the proper colors. Always look at the colors. Really does help with preventing errors. We're going to nest this one inside a little bit of the width plus 10. So let's go width plus 20. So it's more of outline form. And let's scoot this down 20 pixels because I think that should give it enough room. If not, we'll check it. But I want it to be a little closer than the other text I'm blocking around it. Okay, so if it does not exist is not the case. So if it's not this, it'll show up with this. Um, uh, instruction to plot. Now we just need to put the commands in. We need to put the commands in for uh, plotting these. And so we're going to come down here and we also need to put the commands to start over and a handful of others. So for that reason, I'm going to copy some of the commands from above. For instance, this else if statement. Actually, I think I can type that in real quick. And eh, I think I'll type it in real quick. So as long as you can type fast, it shouldn't take but a second. Else, um, let's give us a little comment here. We are putting in commands for starting over and other features, which we'll add in later. Okay, so let's do this. Um, else if, else if, so elif, the event type is a double equal pi game dot all caps key down Qu uh, colon hit return if the event event excuse me event got to type that in carefully if I'm not going to copy and paste it here if the event key is a double equal k underscore first thing I'd like to do is the whole start over thing so let's put in the q so Q has been the command for starting over. And all we're going to do is simply run my main over again. I believe I did it identically above. Else, if the event key, elif event dot key, uh, uh, double equal. So if the key is the K underscore Y, then we need to plot. We need to actually plot or draw the circle. So we're going to do the pi game dot draw dot circle screen and color. Let's go ahead and do black for now. And I'll figure out something later if I want to change it. So black for now. And then where to plot it? Well, it's in the width divided by 2. Width divided by 2. That takes me to the center for the x coordinate. And we don't want to go anywhere from there. So comma, that is the X coordinate. And then the height divided by 2. So we start at its center. Height divided by 2. And then we need to subtract off because it works in an opposite fashion. We don't want to add. So we want to subtract off the Y int that we just calculated. Star K times the K pixels per grid. Make sure you put the close parentheses twice on that. And it looks like I'm going to run out of time for doing the resizing. That'll be my next video. So let's run and see if I've got any errors or if it's working nicely. I want to get this up on the screen. Whoops, lost it there. Hang on. Oh, excuse me. So that you can see it. I think you can see it right now and see everything I'm going to do. So let's put in uh, y equal x to test it real quick. And it did not graph it. I got an error. Let's figure out why. Sorry about that. It was an error that I actually created, but I did find another error that we're going to need to fix. So let me show you a quick graph. Everybody, I'm sure you got something like this if everything went well on your end. But when you hit Q, well, let me hit Y first. So Y had an error when I tried to plot it, and then I'm going to fix that one first. The error it shows me is that it took four arguments, and I think I forgot to give the radius of the draw circle command. So I'm coming way down to the bottom, 
and over here where I did a um, plot circle command on the Y event key, I forgot to, let me extend this out, put a comma and a radius, whoops, after the first, after that parentheses, comma, radius, let's see, uh, three radius should be suffice, maybe four, just slightly bigger than the graph I'm making. So let's run that. You're going to see I have one other error I want to show you. So if I draw X and then hit Y, it does plot it. It is in black. Probably want to change the color of that. We'll do that down the road. But if I hit Q, you'll notice I've got an overlap of text. So let me show you that one. And also, when you close this, it's going to now ask you, do you want to X it all together? The best way to prevent errors and constantly crashing Python is say, yes, let's exit all together. And that was that, that system exit that we've added in. I'm going to hit no, so I'm going to take a chance on crashing the system here in a minute, but I want to quickly get this in because I'm at the 15 minute mark. So way up at the top, we said fill white. Cut that from the top area we said fill the screen white what we want to do is right when we come into the main program every time it's like a brand new game or a brand new cycle so i'm going to say clear the screen with a with that command that we just pasted that we just cut so screen fill white there and i believe now everything should be working wow it didn't crash too let's put in a fun graph how about x times sine of x one of my favorite graphs because of the undulations, as I like to say. Um, and if I plot it, it will work. We've tested that. The Q, good. Everything resets and I can type in something else. So now we have the ability to actually run to make several different equations. We're going to do the resizing in our next video. And then after that, we're going to try to put on um, uh, value points, so x equal value points. And then after that, we still have to um, uh, teach you how to put in multiple graphs. And then I think that'll be the uh, conclusion of this series. I'm David from Electric Teaching. I sure hope you're enjoying this.